Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the invocation. <laughs> Chaplain Rivera will now give the invocation. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, Everything we see and everything we can't see exists because of you alone. It all comes from you. It all belongs to you. It all exists for your glory. Scripture tells us, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. And you are the compassionate and merciful. You are loving to everyone you've made. And Lord, today we give you thanks for this beautiful day for our loved ones. For those who are here with us and those who are with us in spirit. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to serve our country in the world's greatest navy. Thank you for the engineers who lead the way even when there's no way they will build the way. And Lord, we give you thanks for Seco's class 277, their dedication and hard work, their learning, their bounding, their persevering. Lord, bless their road ahead during these challenging times so they can carry on the legacy of CSC, of building, fighting, and the can-do spirit. Thank you for the support and sacrifice of their friends and families. Thank you for the instructors, the staff, the schoolhouse, producing quality officers for decades of freedom, knowledge, and action. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this ceremony with your holy presence. Bless our sailors and marines, soldiers, coast guardsmen, guardians, airmen. Bless our families and loved ones. And God, bless America. Bless our world. And all God's people said, amen. <clears throat> Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Naval Civil Engineer Corps Officer School, more commonly known as Seacoast. I'm Commander Amy Honick, and I'll be your Master of Ceremonies this morning. It's my, my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony of Basic Class 277 and my distinct pleasure to introduce our commanding officer, Captain Jeffrey Davini. Good morning and welcome everyone to Morrell Hall, named for the father of the Seabees, Admiral Ben Morrell. It is home to several entities, but most prominent for this occasion, the Civil Engineer Corps Officer School 
where the Navy's newest Civil Engineer Corps officers have trained for the past 15 weeks and where we've trained them for the past 79 years. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the family and friends of Basic Class 277, both here and in person and those viewing us online. We are happy you are able to join us for this graduation of the Navy's newest Civil Engineer Corps officers. I would like to take a moment to recognize our special guests. Thank you, Rear Admiral Vanderlei, for being our guest speaker this afternoon. We recognize how busy you are and the demands on your time. Thank you for taking the time to be a motivational and inspirational part of the culminating events for Basic Class 277. Thanks also to Commodore Santiago from NCG-1, Captain Allen from Exwick, and to fellow commanding officers and command master chiefs for attending and to all others in attendance. Thanks to Chaplain Rivera for that motivating invocation. I would also be remiss if I did not thank and recognize the team responsible for executing the numerous parts of the basic class training. The SECO staff, along with the extended staff comprised of the chiefs and officers of the Center for Seabees and Facilities Engineering, Naval Facilities Institute, Defense Acquisition University, Marines from Navy Expeditionary Combat Command, and Corpsmen and Seabees from Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 4. From class administration to logistics to teaching from the podium, the field exercise, student advising, it was truly a team effort. Please join me in recognizing the professional cadre of leaders who served as advisors and mentors to this basic class. My last word of thanks goes to our spouses and significant others. I know there are a few of you who joined us here. To all of our spouses, thank you for your dedication and your sacrifices for our Navy and our nation. So August 12, 1946, 15 students of Seacoast Basic Class 1 graduated from a 10-week course of instruction at Camp Perry located in Williamsburg, Virginia. I invite you after the ceremony to look at Seacoast's the early years and other historical displays outside the Seacoast, excuse me, inside the Seacoast lobby. Additionally, the CB Museum located here on Port Wanimi is full of rich Civil Engineer Corps and CB heritage and history. I highly encourage you to visit the museum often throughout your Navy careers to witness our heritage as CEC officers and CBs as you continue to make that history. Today, we'll be adding 36 new Civil Engineer Corps officers to the prestigious list of CEC officers who have graduated from Seacoast Basic over the past 78 years. I'd like to tell you more about Basic Class 277. It consists, as I said, of 36 new officers, some new, brand new to the Navy, some new to the CEC, two lieutenants, seven lieutenants junior grade, 27 ensigns. Accession sources include 18 from Officer Candidate School, six from the United States Naval Academy, three from the United States Merchant Marine Academy, four from NROTC, and one from the Seaman to Admiral Program, State 21, two indefinite reservists who are now active, and two limited duty officers. These officers include engineers of the following disciplines, architectural, aerospace, applied physics, chemical, civil, electrical, marine, ocean, and mechanical. As well, nine of these officers had prior enlisted experience in the armed forces, totaling 66 years of experience. Upon graduation, they will report to the following duty stations. Naval Mobile Construction Battalions 3, 4, 5, 11, 133. Public Works Departments across our Navy, Marine Corps, and joint installations around the world to include Quantico, Miramar, Camp Pendleton, Yuma, Cherry Point, Navfac Marianas, and Guam. Roy Camp Lejeune, Norfolk Navy Shipyard, Bahrain, Point Loma, PWE Pennsylvania, PWE Washington, PWE Norfolk, Whiting Field, Diego Garcia, here in Ventura County, Great Lakes, two to Crane, Ra, <laughs> Yakuska, and Whidbey Island. Over the past 15 weeks, the class has trained to prepare for service as Civil Engineer Corps officers to include an introduction to war fighting, national defense strategy, and operational plans, an overview of the Civil Engineer Corps and Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command, introductions to construction technology and project management, 
Introductions to Naval Construction Force Operations and a Field Trading Exercise. Introduction to Utilities, Public Works, and Installations Management. Construction Safety and Division Officer Leadership and Character Focus Curriculum that highlights the Navy Corps values and 10 signature behaviors of the 21st century sailor. So to basic class 277, congratulations on your accomplishments during these past 15 weeks and your acceptance to the Civil Engineer Corps family. In just about one hour, it will be time for you to take your rightful place in the fleet in the world's finest Navy. It will be time for you to step up and be the Civil Engineer Corps officers the Navy needs so you and we as a Navy will be ready for the, for the next high-end fight. Good luck to all of you and Godspeed. It is now my honor to introduce our guest speaker. Rear Admiral Vanderlei has had an impressive career. He received a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering from Calvin College, a Master's of Science in Civil and Environmental Engineering from Stanford University. He's a graduate of basic class 213, 213, you do the math, it's a couple years ago. He has served all over the world with operational to tours to include the submarine USS Michigan, Naval Mobile Construction Battalion 7, facilities tours, there's a whole lot of them. I, I narrowed them down to some of the cooler ones. Naval Air Station Keflavik, there's still a billet there if you're interested. Head detailer, uh, and he's commanded at many levels to include NMCB-4, Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command Midland, NAVFAC Atlantic, NAVFAC Pacific, Admiral Vanderlei currently serves as a 46th commander of Naval Facilities Engineer Systems Command and the Chief of Civil Engineers. Ladies and gentlemen, Rear Admiral Dean Vanderlei. Well, thank you, Jeff, for that kind introduction. Yeah, and when, when you told me, when you said that uh, you were thanking me for those inspirational, motivational words, that's the first time I'd heard that. So my goal generally at these things is to not be boring. So if I now have to be motivational, inspirational, I have to rethink some of my talking points, but I'll work on it. Um, so thank you so much for all being here. It's really my pleasure. Port Wainimi, as you figured out, is a wonderful, wonderful place. I was able to spend a few years here, and it's always good to be back. I see some, some uh, faces in the audience I know very well, so I always appreciate the opportunity to, to, uh, to be here. Um, thanks particularly for the commanding officers there in the, in the front couple rows. Command Mass Chiefs, future Force Mass Chief, who are all here in the audience, and uh, all of you who have come to see off our, our next group of Civil Engineer Corps officers. Um, most importantly, I want to thank the uh, families and the significant others and the loved ones that are here uh, for this event. Um, it's super important to have you here. Um, I can probably say that most of these folks wouldn't be here without your support, and even more importantly, they won't be here in five years without your support. So as, as uh, for those of us who've been doing this for quite a number of years, we realize that the support of families and friends and significant others are super important to, uh, to their success. So thank you guys so much for being here. Um, <clears throat> you know, since, since you had uh, Captain Davini as your commanding officer, I don't think I have to give you a whole bunch of rah-rah motivation because he is, he is really, really good at that. And so I think you guys understand that you are, uh, for those of you who are just joining or those who've been in, um, you are entering you know, our nation's military and the Civil Engineer Corps at a time uh, when you're really needed. So as the commander of NAFAC, I can tell you that business is booming and that's good and bad. It's good because we're doing a lot of really, really cool work. Uh, we're building new dry docks up in Maine, new dry docks out in Pearl Harbor, um, building uh, infrastructure across remote islands in the Pacific, um, all in support of what we think, you know, potentially could be a high-end fight. Um, <clears throat> Our, our friends in, uh, our, our specific friend in China, the chairman there of the Communist Party has, has made it widely known that uh, he's asked his military publicly to be ready to take Taiwan by 2027. Uh, we're uh, making sure every day when he wakes up and looks in the mirror, uh, he says not today because he knows the price we'll extract will be too high. And U.S. Civil Engineer Corps officers and CBs are gonna have a big part of that. Any conflict in the Pacific has a big component to it um, that involves CBs, involves Civil Engineer Corps. Um, part of the reason the CBs exist, a great part of the reason CBs exist in the first place is because the last time we had a really, really big fight in the Pacific in World War II, we realized that you needed CBs to win a war like that. And in the event that we're gonna to have to do that again, we'll need CBs and Civil Engineer Corps officers again. So that's why you guys are here. Um, beyond that, I have like four pages 
of like stuff that's similar to that that is going to get really boring after a while. So now I will divert from that and try to be interesting. So one thing I say when I when I come to these things is that I've sat in you know in some number of uh, you know graduations throughout my life, and I don't remember any of them. I mean, I don't remember who spoke at any of them, right? I remember graduating, but I never remember who spoke or anything that was said. So I try my best to say something that might be interesting that you'll remember. So someday one of you will likely be standing up here and you'll say, I remember who spoke at my Seacoast graduation because he said something interesting. That's my, my hope and goal in life, or at least my goal in life for this, uh, for this event. So, you know, what I, what I thought, and, and, you know, I speak at these periodically and, there was a, at one point I started giving the same speech over and over again and then I realized the Seacoast people were making fun of me for that. So now, I know, you say no, but you were, you know it. They were all looking like, I wonder if he's going to say that. Oh yeah, he did. There's like a check mark of like things that I already said. So now I just come up with original material each time so you guys won't make fun of me. Um, so this time I thought I would talk a little bit about, um, I, I came up with uh, four things that I think will be really helpful for you as you go out and join your first command as civil engineers. I know when I sat where you sat, and even before that, so, you know, as, as Jeff said, I was somewhat of a slow learner because I uh, spent seven years driving submarines before I finally came to the Civil Engineer Corps. So, so although Jeff made fun of me for being in class like 213, he was in an earlier class than me because I came in as a relatively senior lieutenant to, to Seacoast. <laughs> and he and I were in Iceland together when he was Lieutenant J.G. Divini, so I got lots of dirt on him, but I won't, I won't pass any of that. Um, but, you know, when I think back is when I was a young junior officer, and I was kind of scared, you know, going into this, because I really didn't know what to expect. And it didn't get any better when I first showed up to submarine and you're put in charge of a division of, of people you're supposed to learn. Most of them are older than you. All of them know way more than you. So it's a really, really difficult situation, honestly. And I don't know if you guys feel some of that. Some of you guys who are Lieutenant JGs, line to staffs, maybe feel less of that. But I know I felt a lot of that. And uh, I wasn't sure how to be successful in that. Um, you know, my leadership was, you know, being like captain of the JV basketball team, right? That was, that was my limited level of knowing how to lead people. And, but the thing that I found, so, so, so my approach to it was, I was just going to learn as much as I could about what my people did. And so when I got assigned to be the sonar officer of the USS Michigan, and I didn't know too much about sonar, but I just, I just, you know, spent a lot of time with my guys and had them tell me everything I, I could possibly know about sonar. I even qualified as a sonar operator, which is not typical. And, uh, you know, I did that again. You know, then I, you know, came lateral transfer to the Civil Engineer Corps. I was a senior lieutenant, but really didn't know very much. So again, you know, my first, my first tours in the Civil Engineer Corps, just spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I was supposed to be doing and talking to the people that I was leading and learning a lot. And I will tell you that I found out that that ended up being a really good leadership trait and a really good way to become a leader. Because by doing so, you, you, get to, you, you meet your people, you learn what they do. Um, they really appreciate the fact that you're engaged in what they're doing and interested in what they're doing. And, and over time, it helped me to become a strong leader. So that's the first thing, piece of advice I would give you is no matter where you go, no matter what you do, Put a lot of effort into learning. Always look to learn. And when you're leading, learn what your people do. And that will, uh, something that I've found will really help to make you a great leader. Or at least an acceptable leader, was, which, was, which was my bar of success at that point in my life. Um, a second one, and closely related to that, is to be humble and authentic. Um, I think we've all experienced leaders, so, so it goes aligned with, with recognizing that you are all going to positions that you're completely unqualified for because you are going to be leading people who know a lot more than you do. So you're going to have to do a lot of learning, but you also have to be authentic about you know, that, 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 you, that you have a lot to learn and you're looking to learn from them and to, be, and to have some humility with that. And that will also help you to be a good leader. I, and I've also found, and you're, you know, I'm probably speaking to some millennials here, so i got to be careful what I say, but, but one of the challenges for people like me, it, I guess it's always a challenge, right? New generations are always different than the old generations. The old generations tend to, you know, look down on the new generations, but, you know, someday the new generations are the old generation, so it's kind of a perpetual thing. But the new generations, so I think millennials have a lot to offer, but one thing about them 
is that they really, really value authenticity. So they don't, they don't, they don't enjoy following people that aren't authentic people. And so, you know, as you're going in, especially you guys are going to CB battalions who are going to be leading, you know, 18 and 19 year olds, they're really going to value the fact that you're an authentic leader um, who doesn't try to pretend you know things you, you don't and doesn't pretend to be somebody you're not. And so I think there's something to be said there for being a person who's going to learn as well as being someone who's authentic. Now, I, I'll tell you those two things, but you need to couple it with the third thing I'm going to tell you, which is be inspirational. So <clears throat> it, it's possible to be authentic and to be learning and to be terrible. You know, there are people out there who authentically are terrible and you don't want to be that, right? So you also need to understand how you're being perceived by the people you're leading and be someone that they'll want to follow. When you talk about being an inspirational leader, you know, sometimes people think of that as being like a rah-rah, you know, college football coach. And that there can be an element of that in leadership in being inspirational. But when I look, think about inspirational, you know, inspire is a verb that's got an object. So you want to inspire people to actually do something. So it's not that you have to be a rah-rah leader, but you need to be the kind of leader that people want to follow and that people want, want to go where you're going to take them. So if you couple being an inspirational leader, being somebody people want to follow with being authentic and learning, I think that those are, those are uh, excellent foundational concepts for, for being a great leader. So I, I will challenge you with those things and you can hopefully remember at least one of them. And then the two things I will add on, um, one of them is to take ownership of everything you're doing. So, and this is coming from, you know, what I, to what I told you about leadership so far is kind of from the bottom up. So I gave you some characteristics that I think that the people you lead will really, really appreciate and will make you a strong leader from that level. Something that your, uh, your bosses above you will really appreciate is if you take ownership. Meaning if you're assigned some sort of a task that you don't have to worry about it because it's gonna get done. Um, people who can do that, um, we can all, I think all, all of us who have been leadership positions can go back and mark off people that were really good at that because we never forget them because they're so valuable. And a lot of the folks that are sitting in the front few, row, few rows here that I've worked with, the reason they're sitting in the front few rows is because that's what they were like. Um, you knew that when they were assigned something, it was going to happen, it was going to get done, it was going to get done right because they were going to pay personal ownership to ensure it did. Then in the, uh, the last thing I will tell you is have fun. And you know, I've been watching, so I don't really, I've, I don't know, I've probably posted on Facebook like single digits times in my entire life. But I actually have a Facebook account and I kind of watch it because you learn interesting stuff. So yeah, you guys be, gotta be careful what you post because I actually, you know, the people like me actually like troll it and figure out stuff about people. But one thing I figured about your class is you apparently like to have some fun because I saw some stuff that showed up on there. Some of it was a little bit disturbing, like the parade, the beef at your dining out was disturbing, um, but apparently fun. I think I could see some fun in there. Um, the fact your skipper brought Ficarelli and Conan to be there was, you know, I question his you know, judgment potentially, but they were fun, no doubt, right? They were fun. Um, he's, still here, sorry, at least today. he's still here, yeah. So it didn't go too badly, right? Apparently, you know, everyone, you know, no one died, so that's good. But anyway, so have, but have fun with what you're doing and, and enjoy your career. Hopefully you've figured out that you're joining a group of people in the Civil Engineer Corps and the CBs that are really, really good folks with a really, really important and, and interesting mission. But I think you'll really enjoy what you do. Now I will say, um, there's an aspect of learning to love what you do because there will, days, there will be days where you don't love it. You've probably already had days like that, right? You've, you've, you've been around long enough. You've had some days in the Navy where you didn't love it. I had lots of days where I did not love it. But you know, when you take a step back and look back at your career over, months and years and you know for some of us decades when you look back you really see that you know it was a really good life um, and there was a lot to enjoy and mostly it was because i was working with really really good people so don't ever forget that and don't ever forget you know while you're taking ownership and learning and all those things you know take a look back at yourself and make sure you're having fun and enjoying what you do because you absolutely should be you're in a you're in a job where you should absolutely enjoy what you do and when you look back after you know, months and years and hopefully decades, hopefully you'll have something that um, you can be really proud of what you did, but also you can say, you know, I really, really enjoyed it. I really, really worked with some great people and I will never forget and I'll always be proud of what I did. So hopefully that wasn't boring um, and hopefully you'll remember some of it. 
you're entering a great possession. Now, the one thing, I'll, the other thing that I'll do to try to be memorable is I forgot to say this at the beginning. Often I'll ask you guys to, to ask me a question. So I will right now, I have a coin here for the, for the brave graduate um, who is going to ask me a question for me to answer. Fire away. Knew it, knew it. No, no, just stay right there. Wow. Oh, man. <laughs> so a question that's very deserving of a coin um, and a really hard one. So, so for those who couldn't hear, his question was, you know, after my 33 years in the Navy and 25 years in the Civil Engineer Corps, what legacy am I, am I leaving uh, for those folks? So first of all, the idea that you're thinking about that, I think is very, very positive because for all of us, you know, that is our goal in life. So we, you know, we all have, we all have a, a limited amount of time where we can make a difference in this world and make a difference in the Navy, make a difference in the Civil Engineer Corps. And if any of us walk away feeling like we didn't make a difference, um, then we failed. So, so I think that is something that's really, really important is to make that difference. Um, what I've really tried to do, the difference that I've tried to make that hopefully you will see as well, is to create an organization and a community that's collaborative and works together as a team. Um, I found that to be, in, in our line of work, super important. So there's a lot of stuff that goes into that, into being a collaborative leader. Um, you know, another word, an inclusive leader is another word that that means, that comes along. Um, sometimes the military has a reputation for leadership that's very authoritative and um, doesn't leave a lot of opportunity for feedback and communication and engagement. And, and there's a place for that. But I think for an organization to be really effective, there has to be a lot of collaboration, you know, vertically and horizontally. And I've really tried to drive that into the organization. So even so within NAFAC, you know, when we're doing executing, you know, projects, hopefully those of you going to be um, um, uh, construction uh, managers, um, you know, hopefully you'll see an organization where you're partnering with the contractors, you're working together to solve problems, you're working across the organization, you know, your higher headquarters is engaging with you to try to support you. That's the kind of organization that I think is really, really effective. Um, when, you, when you're leading people, I talked about the way you learn and you're authentic. That's the kind of, those are the kind of leaders that are effective. So if I, can, if I leave anything um, for, for you guys, hopefully I've left an organization and a, and a vision of a collaborative organization that's inclusive, that allows everybody to be great, and which ultimately brings all the right folks together to do what we need to do. So thank you for that, really good. And now I will stop creating feedback and let the Excel get back to her business. <laughs> Thank you, Admiral. The Navy takes great pride in recognizing the outstanding performance of its personnel. In keeping with this tradition, we would like to recognize those students who have displayed outstanding character and competence as evaluated by their academic performance, leadership, physical fitness, personal initiative, and enthusiasm. These distinguished graduates represent the top 15% of their class. Captain Davini will now join Admiral Vanderlei at the center of the stage to recognize and congratulate the honor graduate and distinguished graduates of basic class 277. <clears throat> the honor graduate receives a membership in the Society of American Military Engineers, a Seacoast coin, and a copy of Can Do, the story of builder fighter CDs of World War II, signed by Admiral Vanderlei. The honor graduate of basic class 277 is Lieutenant Junior Grade Daniel Cannon. Picture. There we go. There we go. <laughs> the following officers are graduating with distinction. Each distinguished graduate receives a congratulatory letter and a Seacoast coin. The distinguished graduates are Ensign Philip Douglas.
Benson, Kevin Conway. Ensign Bryce Garner. Ensign Jack Ciceri. And send Bridget Welch. Our next award not only recognizes an outstanding basic student, but also honors a very, a very special member of the Seacoast family. Seacoast was fortunate to have an individual who dedicated her entire adult life to the faithful service of our country, our Navy, and in particular, our Seacoast students. Having stood the watch faithfully for nearly 45 years, she graduated literally thousands of CEC officers, including every current active duty and reserve Civil Engineer Corps Admiral. She is an American patriot of the highest order and among the very few individuals who have officially been made an honorary CB. As a reflection of her enduring presence and enthusiasm, Seacoast has established the commem commemorative Commodore Hunt Esprit de Corps Award. The narrative on the plaque reads, in recognition of those members of basic classes past who personified the spirit and camaraderie and teamwork, demonstrated an infectious and unwavering positive attitude and distinguished themselves through their personal energies in support of their class and shipmates. The student from each basic class who best meets these characteristics has their name inscribed on the plaque. It is our pleasure to announce the newest recipient of the Commodore Hunt Award, Ensign Philip Douglas. Basic class 277, it's now our pleasure to recognize your efforts and present your diplomas. Admiral Vanderlei and Captain Dinvidi will present the diplomas. Lieutenant Kwan, please prepare the class for graduation. Lieutenant Sean Kennedy, FIAD Yuma. <laughs> Lieutenant Noah Webster, PWD Norfolk. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Jake Chasson, PWD Norfolk. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Liam Connors, PWD Crane. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Daniel Cannon, PWD Crane. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Royden Kelman, PWD Diego Garcia. Yeah. 
Lieutenant Junior Grade, Zachary Laird, OICC Marianas. Lieutenant Junior Grade, David Polzin, NAFAC Marianas. Lieutenant Junior Grade, Nathaniel Schmidt, PWD Bahrain. Ensign, Sari Aranki, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune. Ensign, Riley Bowen, PWD Ventura County. Ensign Antonio Cavaretta, PWD Kings Bay. Ensign Jack Cesare, PWD Great Lakes. Ensign Kevin Conway, PWD Yokosuka. Ensign Ethan Dean, Fiad Miramar. Ensign Togarma Dawson, NMCB 3. Congratulations. Ensign Philip Douglas, PWD Whidbey Island. Ensign Harry Friedman, PWD Washington. Looks very heavy out there. Please fix the H pack. <laughs> <laughs> Ensign Bryce Garner, Fiat Quantico. Ensign Marissa Hall, NAFAC Marianas. Congratulations. Lots of work to do out there. Ensign Brett Johnson, PWD Bahrain. Congratulations. Good place for Ensign Noah Kuntz, Roy Norfolk Naval Shipyard. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Ensign Sung Lee, NMCB 133. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Ensign Anthony Lucis, NMCB 4. Congratulations. 
Ensign Anthony McBride, Jr., NMCV 11. Ensign Carl Molino, FIAD, Camp Pendleton. Ensign Reagan Nunez, NAFAC, Washington. Ensign Jeremy Pratt, NMCB 5. Ensign Abe Reyes, FIAD Cherry Point. Sir, congratulations. Thank you. Ensign Anthony Sigliano, PWD Pennsylvania. Ensign Seth St. Ange, NMCB 11. <laughs> Ensign Logan Thompson, PWD Norfolk. Ensign David Tawney, PWD Whiting Field. Ensign Vinny Valenti, NMCB 4. Ensign Bridget Welch, PWD Point Loma. Ensign Raphael Yu, NMCB 133. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the benediction. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we once again give you thanks for these graduating students of class 277. May they continue to ever always learn to continue to grow in knowledge and stature. Fill them with your wisdom. Open their horizon to see grand visions and new creative ideas, strengthening them with character and confidence, emboldening their attitude with hope and inspiration. May they go to the ends of the world to build, to fight, to win our nation's wars. May they lead with boldness, lead with duty and extreme ownership. May they lead with honor, courage, and commitment. May your eternal goodness always rest upon them May your righteous light always guide them. Bless Seacoast 277. Bless the engineers. Bless our sailors and Marines. Bless our families and loved ones. And God bless America. Bless 
the world you love so much, you sent your only son to live and die so that we may have life eternal, life abundantly. May the strength of God sustain us. May the power of God preserve us. May the hands of God protect us. May the way of God direct us. And may the love of God go with us this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain. <laughs> Please take your seats. Admiral Vanderlei, on behalf of the graduating class and Seacoast, thank you for participating in today's ceremony. We won't make any jokes, I promise. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us both in person and online to honor our graduates. Please make sure you welcome them into your commands and this amazing community we have in the Civil Engineer Corps. This concludes the broadcasted portion of our ceremony.